Hi, Bridget. Thank you for being with me uh, today. Um, it's really great to catch up with you. Um, we've known each other, I think, for well, probably 15, 16 years, maybe even a I bit longer. longer than that. Yeah. I was um, trying to pick one out. And I, I go by the age of my youngest daughter, who's coming uh, up for 30. So we've known each other 20 years, I hate to tell you. Wow, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been tw twenty years because I remember when we first met. I was um, we met in team and going to Pulau. I I was with Jason Marston right. and I picked you yeah. guys up on an eco field trip yeah. course on a. Yeah. I can't remember which school it was, but it was a very nice. I think maybe Oakham School from England. I think yeah, it could could have been yeah. an English really school. school. Fantastic students, really great teachers course you know a trip like we were offering if you've got a diving teacher they're straight on <laughs> yeah yeah the teachers were very keen to dive so and the, the trip was just amazing i mean it was something that i put together specifically for the english schools and um, it gave them a little touch of singapore so they landed in singapore and then before they you know got too comfortable there i'd take them straight up to tillman island where they did an introduction to tropical ecosystems. And then the best of all was when we got on that boat and went to Kula Aar, and they all learned how to do their diving. And those that die, you know, that had qualifications could just dive with me. And that was just fantastic. And then back to Singapore, usually they'd have a day in Singapore before they went back home. And um, it was just an amazing trip. Yeah, that was when the pound was, uh, three singapore dollars to the pound so it was uh -huh. very very attractive for the uk but yeah. since then it's not been quite so attractive <laughs> yeah, so <well. laughs> the numbers have fallen a lot from uk schools oh right yeah yeah well but, you know yeah i mean it's it's just the same fluctuating currencies all over the world and travel I'm not even going to go into covid but pre-covid <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah um, yeah absolutely different countries were yeah, yeah, you know, they because we always quote in Singapore dollars or a Singapore, yeah. Singapore company. And, um, you know, it really depended on how strong that was, how many overseas clients we got, particularly from the UK and Ireland. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, I always, I always enjoyed uh, those trips and I thought it was always a great um, thing. It was, uh, you know, it really was reef to re uh, rainforest to reef. Uh, yeah. education yeah. Uh, that was our original trip that i started it's uh, and i mean i go back to 1997 so you know the company is 23 years old now yeah and the reason i started it is um i was doing some supply teaching here in singapore when i first arrived and realized that the kids in singapore just never went out and explored their fabulous reefs and mangroves um, you know, a lot of the international schools, the teachers weren't familiar with the biology, they weren't comfortable with the venues and, you know, they just didn't feel comfortable to take kids out. And yeah. local schools, they were just not doing any outdoor ed. So I started off doing three day introductions to marine biology. We went down to Batam and Bintan and uh, we did mangroves, seashores and coral reefs. And it was just such a huge success um very close to singapore only a 45 minute uh, ferry ride but the logistics when we got to uh you know batam or bintan it was very difficult in those days you know we're going back over 20 years and you know it was it was just like you never knew when the bus was turning up or who was coming or what time the ferry arrived and it just didn't suit schools we had to be more organized and that's when we chose the venues to Tillman. Yeah. so um and then ever since then, you know, we added tropical rainforest into the program then because on Tillman, we've got primary rainforests, which are, they rival any place else in the world. Um, so we've got all the ecosystems there and it's not too far from home, um, safe venue. You know, it's got an airport, small island, beautiful place. You know it well. Yeah, I mean, definitely Tillman. I remember doing a field trip uh, when I was in school doing biology. Yeah. And you really that would be the other side of the island, I think. Yes, it was. Yeah. And everything. 
thing. That was the like outdoor adventure. And we yeah. were on the west side where we did we did all the biology. And that's what schools have started to really recognize us as we're, a, a, you know, a, um, we do educational field trips, but focusing on biology, ecology, geography, anything to do with science, particularly, you know, yeah. biology. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, so it's a journey. great place. Yeah. A journey yeah. from the rainforest to the reef. Ex yeah. And I still think <laughs> Teoman Island offers the best of, I mean, in all the years since then, we've developed countless other areas and we have trips that go into really super places. Um, we've even run some trips to the Maldives, to the Seychelles, dive trips, few yeah. and far between because the budgets are so much higher there. Yeah. But, you know, we currently run trips into Nepal, Vietnam, um, Sri Lanka, oh, wow. uh, Bali, Lombok, just countless places. But to me, Tioman still has it all because we have everything within a half a day's walk. You know, yeah. you can be on our venue. You've got a rainforest behind us. We've got a reef in front. Um, yeah. short walk to a, a village where you see some real culture malay culture um, and then it's again another short walk to get into a really diverse mangrove so yeah you know yeah we're really lucky to have such a place yeah it really so, is it's a, yeah it, a fantastic it's being place. developed though rapidly and not how we'd like to see it developed too many people too many tourists too many yeah. resorts and you know not thought out very carefully so We'll see what the future holds. Yeah. I, moment, I, yeah. I mean, and that is, that's the, that's the, I think that sometimes the decisions made into developing places are, are made without that connection that yeah. people have well, had and to understand. You know, I, th I think things are better now, but you know, in many of these countries where we're working, uh, the, the rural population, they're not very business savvy. So they're very happy to put up a, any sort of accommodation, make some quick money, um, you know, have some tourists in there, but not actually be really kind to the environment around them. Um, so, you know, we see this a lot on Tillman. You get little yeah. resorts popping up all over the place. They don't have proper garbage disposal, you know, you get invaded by the macaques, uh, you get the damage is really, you know, the reefs are damaged because of, um, you know, runoff from septic tanks, etc. or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just generally, I think people, you know, they need to educate their tourists to look after what they're, what they're looking at, mm -hmm. particularly the reefs. Yeah. So that's, my main thing is you know all the kids we take on out uh, we say we're going to visit these wonderful ecosystems but we really don't want to leave any damage behind us yeah it can be a challenge when you've got like a lot of kids yeah. <laughs> because you know they all have footprints but yeah. yeah safe entry into a coral reef there's always a channel that you can you can use but yeah. you know general tourists are completely unaware that coral reefs are living on animals <laughs> yeah absolutely easily damaged yeah 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 so um yeah. still just sharp sharp rocks to a lot of people unfortunately they just don't realize that it, they, they really have no idea what they're looking at and you know yeah. at, at our resort on tillman island we have many posters up explaining everything all around tillman they do but yeah. still you get crowds of tourists in there and they're just not interested in learning and they pay very little heat to anybody so yeah. you know the numbers of tourism i mean i would say tillman and many other places on the planet is breathing a great big sigh of relief because of all the uh the lack of tourists this over the last 12 months with covid yeah uh, it's it's an intro i mean it's interesting because it's a hit to that industry the tourism industry but at, at the same time it's it is maybe a bit of a time to reflect on how things were done. And I, 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 I brought up Maldives before, you know, I um, obviously spent an awful lot of time there um, and love the, the place. Um, and I always get a little bit 
frustrated when I see news articles about like uh, the plastic pollution there because it, the articles, it never really gets to the, the, the point that that plastic is, is coming from somewhere else and needs to be there because of people who have come from somewhere else. And well, <laughs> I mean, we really see it in, in, in Indonesia and in Malaysia. The, you know, the, the garbage in the oceans it is just shocking. And mm. in the mangroves, it's just, you know, you just think, oh, but there's no point in cleaning this up because there's just too much of it. But I keep telling students, every piece you take out of there is one piece less. Yeah. So every group that we take out, we have um, a rice sack or something, and we will be collecting whatever we see that shouldn't be there. Yeah. That's and brilliant. that's just our trips now. Yeah. Well, I think it, yeah, it's a great message that you can it's a, make change. Yeah. Yeah, we have to thank David Attenborough, though, because he's the one who's really made changes. I've yeah. been going on about this for all my life. But, yeah. but when you get somebody as famous as him, really making a great show like his last one, it made oh, yeah. people really stop and think. So yeah. I think, you know, an amazing man. I'm just so in awe of him. Always yeah. have been, right yeah. since I was a <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, I would definitely say, uh, you know, Blue Planet was probably one of the catalysts for me to really want to become a marine biologist, and probably a Life lot on Earth. more. That yeah, was mine. yeah. Life on Earth. You know, I go, I go back a few years before you, Dom. So you <laughs> yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> Blue Planet came out a lot later. Yeah, you know, I was very inspired by um, you know his documentaries and his book. I was just absolutely, and many times during my career, I've had those moments where I'm sitting in the very place that he did on his shows. And I just yeah, cannot wow. think that I am actually just like David Attenborough. Here I am, you know, with a gorilla in Uganda, with, uh, you know, it, where Wallace was um, on those Wallace. islands. Yeah, yeah it was, it's Indonesia. just it's amazing. It's been like a really, he's been just my idol forever. Yeah, well, that's, that's, uh, it's great that, to hear that and yeah and that last show was i mean i really hope it the, the, it was such a powerful message and i just i just hope it gets uh it reached I, a lot of people i just hope it really sticks it, with people. it will because i think you know it, it had such an effect on a lot of people i think people who really had never really thought of the consequences of being a vegetarian and mm -hmm. realized you know just by cutting their meat down by, you know, two thirds made a yeah. huge difference in the planet. And I found a lot of people have done that. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm one of those people, I, I actually prefer vegetarian food, but I will eat whatever is offered. I travel a lot, or at least I used to before COVID. So yeah. I'm, I'm just, you know, whatever you serve me, I'm happy to eat. Yeah. It's a few things I have difficulty with, but generally I'm at <laughs> An easy person to, to have for dinner wherever in the planet it is but i do like to cut down on my meat consumption and i think you know if everybody has that mindset it, it will make a difference yeah definitely Good. i think just cutting down a, a little a little bit um yeah and think i mean yeah we go a lot of people talk uh, there's, there's always a there seems to be a, a a trend to to kind of go back to maybe not ancestral roots, but um, I mean, not like a paleo well, no. or something like that, but. But I think more holistic food. Yeah. It's, it's more, you know, I mean, I wouldn't dream of eating the things I ate when I was a student, um, you know, tinned stuff and Maggie mm -hmm. Mee and things. But and I think <laughs> people are, are aware, you know, that this is like, you know, we can eat better than that. We don't yeah. have to spend a lot of money, but we eat better food for us and better food for the planet. Yeah. And uh, so that's the, the thing that's that's important is it, it's collective. And you know, with eco field trips, connecting students and connecting people with our planet is really what I've made my working life. That's my commitment. I love it. So it's not yeah. really hard. Um, but you know, I really feel that if if 
out of any bunch of students that I take out, if I can just capture one or two that is committed to making the changes that is necessary, then that's, you know, that's great. Yeah. Um, you know, over the past year, we've had very little business because of COVID, but that's allowed us to look very closely at Singapore and what we can offer students within yeah. Singapore, because, you know, we are now doing field trips here, but yeah, yeah. I don't know when you were in Singapore last, but for me, I mean, I never really paid attention to how much was happening here. Yeah. And it's so impressive. I mean, the sustainable city, the vertical gardens, you know, the, the drive to produce at least one third of its food by 2030. It's, it's just amazing. And yeah. all the fresh water, you know, they're going to be completely independent. It's phenomenal. I mean, it's it's been coming for many years. It's They've just had this vision of how they're going to make this city green and work and sustainable. Yeah. So there's a lot that I'm learning and still am. So we're taking students out here not as exciting as um, the places that behind me, yeah. but, but certainly, you know, I'm getting them snorkeling in Singapore waters. It oh, can be, great. yeah, it can be a, a bad day and you can't really see more than, you know, 30 centimeters, but that's just life. You know, there's yeah. actually a lot of marine life in Singapore waters. Is, and when yeah. it is good, you can see a lot of things. So. Yeah. That's what we're doing this year. We're still doing our, we're not doing, we're doing a little bit on rainforests, but, um, you know, I, a lot of the work we do is really kind of exploring and going to places where not many people are. Yeah. Uh, whereas in Singapore, there's lots of people everywhere. It's all very controlled. You can't get off the paths. There are fantastic um, walkways and boardwalks into mangroves and uh, yeah. through forests, but you cannot get off the path. So, you know, for us, it, it's lacking that sort of, you know, getting kids really immersed. close to nature and, yeah, immersed in it. Yeah. Plus, a lot of the surveys that we like them to do for IB, IGCSE, etc. And there's very few places in Singapore where we can actually take students into survey. Um, yeah. So we're, we're compromised in, in working like that. But like I said, we've got a lot of knowledge about what this city is all about, what this state is like. And um, yeah. I think in the future, we'll be marketing Singapore as a venue for overseas trips, particularly geography, because it's just everything you read in the geography books are right here in action. Yeah, yeah. So it's very impressive. Well, that's, yeah. it's, um, it's a, a, a great place to learn about, how, um, the human relationship with nature you know that's yeah. sustainability um, yeah it's uh, i think it's one of the top five sustainable cities in the world yeah right. and yeah. it's likely to overtake you know i don't i'm not an expert on that but i'm really impressed at what i see yeah and we still have great places we have great mangroves that we can go to yes um, you know we have we still have reefs i went diving a couple of weeks ago and the visit was about four or five meters. It was fantastic. Yeah. I think it was fantastic because I hadn't been diving for over a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was just the sound of my breathing underwater was fabulous. Yeah, it's so, like I'm the first, diving for the first time again. <laughs> no, it was. But I mean, you can imagine here in Singapore, yeah. the visibility is low. And, you know, we saw all sorts of amazing things. I mean, we had fantastic seahorses, which you don't see in many areas. Yeah. Um, big flatworm, yeah. nice big stinging hydroids where I got stung, of course. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it was of... yeah, really, really good, really good dive. I did yes. my um, uh, dive master with uh, Jason Marston in wow. mostly in in Hantu, yeah. Hantu in Singapore. Yeah. I did my rescue with him. Donkeys, uh, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah way back in the early 90s i think and that was also in singapore waters yeah so if you can well, if you can predation in singapore you can do it anywhere because you know it's very low biz that's a, a, a very good yeah that's a really good point um that you, you it, it makes it's yeah. prepared well, for no. hard conditions and visibility wise yeah. Yeah. but also i mean i remember when i was doing my when i would do dive 
my dive master course or even when I was helping Jason out with courses like rescue I would have to be like the vic victim who was lost yeah. and you know you're hanging around in this low visibility water but then as soon as you kind of start to look at you know close up yeah. and yeah. change the perspective you actually see yeah. well there is there's a, there's a lot of life here and and yeah, it's really interesting yeah and, and really so, yeah you know i i think the the scary thing when you've got very low vis like that is you know you take your eyes off your buddy for a second and and they're oh. gone so yeah. you know you have to be really really careful with that because um you know yeah. so diving with students here in singapore waters yeah. i'm not very keen on doing that you know i was exploring it but i'm working with a really good dive company they have actually specialized in diving in singapore waters they're called yeah. cuttlefish for a long Nuts. time i thought it was cuttlefish and i'm thinking oh, i like that name but then i discovered it was actually cuttlefish which is even nicer <laughs> um, so for them they don't ever do diving outside of singapore waters even non-covid you know right so they really know their singapore waters and they've they actually, they're really good. They can oh, find things sounds, everywhere. Yeah. So I'm really impressed. That is, that's a yeah. impressive. Uh, you know, you're way. saying that uh, for when they're training dive, when they're doing their dive training, that it's usually, they have two students maximum yeah. to one instructor, which is, you know, that's like, normally it's four. Yeah. So it's like a lot, it's, yeah. And then they often have a helper as well. So yeah. to do your dive course here, you know, you need a lot more backup because of the low vis. Oh yeah. I remember I nearly had a a hard lesson was when I was teaching kids as, and I was the dive master and I remember one second they the the let go of the anchor line and I was yeah. you know yeah. you almost lost them in the vis and you think, oh and, yeah, and you yeah, kind yeah. of forget that they don't yeah. know what then they're new to this, they don't necessarily know what to do and they can panic and when, freeze. Like, when you've got some conditions, you get very disorientated, not sure which is up and down. Yeah. So, you know, new divers, I think they've got a lot. They've got a lot to learn when they're diving in Singapore waters. Yeah, absolutely. But that's not my job. I don't teach diving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I teach um, marine biology much nicer. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. And it's good to get that... Um, yeah. It's like when you said with uh, just getting one per you know, one person connected. I remember I I actually talked about it on with Owen, who I uh, had on this first one, was it was on one of your trips. Um I think his name was Jack. And I remember I heard after his he did he did uh the field trip, he went on and did ecology in in uh, he's over in the US now doing and, I think he finished his PhD. Yeah, he finished his PhD and he and I, I was just I was just really stoked to hear that someone had yeah you know that 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 had happened. That, yeah. Um, that happened many times. Yeah we, it must have been. because we um employ a lot of new graduates because you know you know what it's like when you come out of university. <laughs> you've got a great degree you're full of enthusiasm ready to go and there are no jobs <laughs> so for us as we got bigger um my daughter was one of the first people young people that i employed she did a degree in zoology just like i did but her main passion was marine biology yeah. and she qualified from southampton university in the uk she and a couple of her friends came out and they worked for me and that was like, it was a lifesaver for us because we needed more staff um, and we couldn't get them in Singapore. You know, a lot of Singapore graduates didn't have the skills we needed. They weren't, you know, competent and comfortable in the water. Um, you know, they, it, Singaporeans were, are not, well, now they've changed, but in those days, they didn't get out of their classroom very much. You know, they, their classroom learning was top priority. So yeah. field trip and being outdoors, that just wasn't a big deal. Um, so consequently, you know, even now, we still have difficulty, you know, fitting our staff bill with Singaporeans because they are a lot more outdoors than what they were. 
Um, we have some fantastic staff right now, actually. Now we're down to three Singaporean staff. We haven't got any foreign staff except myself and my yeah. partner. Um, but that's because of COVID. Normally yeah, we right. have 25 staff. Um, a lot of those would be interns from the various different universities in Australia, in uh, the UK particularly, and in Europe. So they come into us, uh, they do a six month internship, which yeah. is on a work they pass. Um, and then after that, we apply for an EP for them, employment pass here in Singapore. And, um, and then that's it. They work with us generally for like between, I would say the average time is probably one to three years. And then they're, you know, they've done a lot of field work. They've gotten up at 5 a.m. plenty of times to do, uh, you know, an intertidal. And, um, and they get a bit tired. <laughs> so they... <laughs> They, and they want to and they want to further their career. But, you know, Absolutely. during that time with us, those young biologists get an opportunity to really kind of, um, you know, they get a lot on their CV after working with us. They've Absolutely. worked with groups, they've risk managed, they've, yeah. you know, managed programs, they've, you know, all sorts of things. Uh, and you know, they've also skills. had direct communication with the school. So... Uh, presentation skills they have a lot of a lot of skills where they take on to their next job and i'm really proud of the way some of our staff have gone on and just become incredible very yeah. successful people yeah i remember um funnily enough um when i was doing my phd there was one of your ex-staff doing his honors with us he's singaporean jake jacob his name was oh jacob and he's Fabulous. doing his phd on yeah. that he's doing his phd now very nice. yeah. really great guy, really great guy. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. He was down here. Uh, he had about a, I think he had a, like a, about eight months when he was waiting for his PhD to come through and he yeah. came and worked for us. He was fantastic. Yeah. But you know, we get all sorts. I mean, we get very interesting, very diverse staff. They come from everywhere. They come with lots of knowledge. So that gives the company a lot of energy. You know, I mean, yeah. we need, we need these young people to bridge the, the the gap with the young kids that we're taking out. I mean, we take students from the age of 10 right up to what well, we do universities as well. But, you know, we really find that when our staff are young and enthusiastic about what they're doing, those kids are just a joy to work with because they think, yeah. it's, you know, they, they really like their leaders. We do like a, one biologist for every 10 students. And so there's lots of you know, you get to know your biologist over the course of three or five days. Yeah. And uh, it's just really nice. You know, they make great friends. We've had lots of students that have come that have ended up doing marine biology and, yeah. you know, gone into biology at different levels, all doing very good jobs right now. So looking forward to getting our team building that back up, hopefully towards the end of this year and um, being able to go back out into the field.